Part 1. So many different things. First, we need to establish that overdancing is a term distinct to K-pop. If you scour the internet, you might find this word mentioned on the odd forum discussing what it means to balance artistry and musicality with displays of good technique, but generally, it's not a correction used amongst dancers. Therefore, the way overdancing is currently being used within the K-pop fandom is based on a number of loose definitions proposed by popular YouTube channels which are then being interpreted and upheld by other fans. In this video, I'll be doing a deep dive into both the meaning of the word overdancing and the implications it holds for idol dancing as a whole. To begin our investigation, let's first examine how the word overdancing is being used to evaluate different idols. I will start with the person I see most frequently labeled as an overdancer, Jihyo. It's immediately obvious that Jihyo is using so much energy that she ends up being unable to control her movements. Her angles are all over the place, and she isn't able to show different dynamics or textures. There's no rise and fall, no lull in the level of intensity, making her performance monotonous despite the obvious enthusiasm. Is this overdancing? Well, it certainly seems so. An overexertion of energy leading to poor dynamics is practically the textbook definition of overdancing according to the YouTube comments at this point. Let's move on to our next case study. In their dance ranking of Luna, White Raven K-pop fan mentions that one of Olivia's weaknesses is her tendency to add extra movements or overcomplicate certain steps. They define this as overdancing. Let's take a look. This is actually the definition of overdancing that is closest to what was being discussed in the ballet forums I showed you earlier. As a general rule, inexperienced dancers tend to fixate on technique and forget about the other aspects of dancing. In ballet, this tendency often manifests itself as six pirouettes that take a student off the music or high extensions that were supposed to be at 45 degrees. In street dance or open style, these students look like they don't know when to relax into the steps. Not only does this show a lack of artistry, but it can also affect a student's body control, making them look messy. In this case, it seems that overdancing does not describe excessive energy, but instead the result of someone putting too much focus into demonstrating their technique and not enough thought into the artistry and purpose of their performance. Jimin is another idol who is frequently criticized for overdancing. In his case, it's a combination of the two possible definitions of overdancing I mentioned above. He has a tendency to make steps more difficult than they need to be, and I see sudden bursts of uncontrolled energy in his dancing. Here, we see that he executes these steps with much more force than necessary, adding arm locks. J-Hope on the other hand, keeps his energy level and relaxed. So perhaps, overdancing can mean either an overexertion of energy, or a misplaced focus on demonstrating technical proficiency, or both. I'm going to make a bold statement up front. Momo doesn't actually have any significant problems managing her energy. Here, she shows a good sense of dynamics, interspersing moments of resistance within a mostly hard-hitting sequence. She also doesn't overcomplicate movements. In fact, her executions are noticeably clean. She does execute everything more full out than the rest of the members. However, that mostly comes down to the fact that Momo is actually able to pull off the choreography correctly while the others are not. This is not to say that she doesn't have difficulty moving smoothly, but that issue stems from her inability to release the tension in her body, not a lack of awareness regarding dynamics or clarity. So why is she consistently accused of overdancing? On the scene said it themselves, Momo's dancing outside of Twice's choreography shows a decent sense of dynamics, if a little uninteresting at times, but she looks jeeringly forceful when dancing among the other members. In fact, this is a pattern I see quite a lot. Dancers with good dynamics end up being criticized for overdancing within the idol context. The logical conclusion to this is that maybe, there is a different aesthetic standard present in idol dancing compared to its adjacent genre, open style. Part 2, To Dance Like a Dancer Regardless of what particular definition you assign, the term overdancing in and of itself implies that a dancer is doing too much of something, too much energy, too much power, too much focus on technique. In this comment, on the scene states that professional dancers who compete always overdance, whether on purpose or not. However, when I watch dance battles, classes, or competitions between good professionals, I don't feel like the dancers are doing too much. They are energetic, 
for sure, but to tone that down would be to remove something important from the performance. It seems that what on the scene is doing here is judging professional dancers according to the aesthetic standards of idol dancing. If we assume that the level of intensity of most professional dancers is correct by general dance standards, that they are not overdancing, we can now pinpoint exactly how and why the aesthetic standards of idol dancing differ. What does it mean to perform as a dancer? Your body and face are your sole sources of communication, embodying the music and the emotion of the choreography. Anything you want the audience to experience from your performance, you have to channel through your physical movement. You can't shout except with your body's power. You can't whisper except with grace and restraint. Bear with me and my one and a half months of singing lessons for a second, and let's take a look at what it means to perform as a singer. In this case, you communicate mostly through your voice, with your face and casual movement capturing the emotions that spill over. Phrasing and dynamics are very powerful tools you can use to invoke feelings in the listener that plain words can't. A scream will never compare to a sustained note at the climax of a song. Now, think for a moment, what happens when someone tries to sing like a singer and dance like a dancer at the same time? How is the audience supposed to react when there is an equal amount of emotion coming from both a person's body and voice? Of course that is overwhelming. If you think about it in terms of conversation, people like to listen to expressive storytellers. Personally, I find it much more interesting to listen to Trevor Noah than my old English teacher who would talk with her shoulders hunched and her hands dropped by her side the entire time. However, there is a big difference between someone gesticulating to enhance their words and your younger sibling running around doing cartwheels while trying to tell you why Warrior Cats is the best book series of all time. That's just too much. Instead of adding to the excitement in their words, the cartwheels convey so much excitement that I can't focus on anything being communicated to me. This is essentially what an audience member experiences when an idol dances with the same amount of intensity they sing or rap with. It's not a reaction that's distinct to K-pop either. If you look at this video of dancers covering the choreography from Britney's I'm a Slave for You, all of the comments are criticizing them for going too hard. They obviously don't use the same vocabulary as K-pop fans, but the aesthetic aversion to seeing a singer's choreography executed like dance choreography is the same. Overdancing, in the way it is most commonly used, doesn't have anything to do with whether or not someone has a good grasp of dynamics. It's the most obvious symptom of a larger fact, that the type of dance meant to accompany singing must be based in fundamentally different sensibilities than the type of dance meant as a performance art all on its own. Part 3. To dance like a singer. We've just established that to dance like a dancer is to overdance by idol dancing standards. The follow-up question to that is, what does it mean to dance like a singer? To find the answer, we have to go back to the origin of the artist factory model, Motown. Three years before Johnny Kitagawa founded Johnny and Associates in 1962, and 36 years before the first K-pop company, Berry Gordy Jr. founded Motown Record Corporation. While many of the things we associate with K-pop today, variety shows, marketing idols as talents, even the term idol used in this context, came from J-pop. The concept of using an assembly line-like process to produce collaborative hits that later get doled out to artists who can sing and dance came from Motown's massive commercial success. Under this label were groundbreaking acts such as the Jackson 5 and the Supremes, and many of the artists were cultivated under an artist development system very similar to the one seen in K-pop companies today. Cholly Atkins was a Tony Award-winning choreographer and tap dancer who worked for Motown from 1965 to 1971. As an in-house choreographer for a record label, he was working under many constraints. For one, most of the artists had no prior dance training. Second, they obviously had to sing. To address these points, Atkins came up with a technique called vocal choreography. It was a form of dancing that prioritized singing over everything else. He choreographed around their voices, making sure the performers had a stable torso, room to breathe, and could easily time their return to the microphone. In the steps themselves, you can see that the dancers are quite lifted with barely any changes in level. No hard hits, no jumps. Now, I want to ask you a question, does vocal choreography remind you of anyone you've seen in K-pop? That's right. 
while it's obviously much more street dance influenced than what Atkins was teaching, in many ways, I see Taman as the last defender of vocal choreography in K-pop. He rarely moves his torso, his center of gravity is really high considering the style, and he favors clarity over power. He dances like a singer, a singer with great dance technique, but a singer nonetheless. It's very telling that Taman is the only idol who I've never heard accused of overdancing, despite the fact that his sense of dynamics is not better than most other main dancers in K-pop. In earlier generations, a vast majority of K-pop dances were reminiscent of vocal choreography in terms of aesthetic, if not in style. While I've talked a bit about the Pirapara influence before, it's also noticeable that a lot of girl group choreography was based in heel dance while boy group choreography pulled from basic hip-hop steps. The moves were simpler, required less power, and generally seemed to keep the idol's primary objective, to sing, in mind. Flash forward to this year, and it's blatantly obvious how much harder the choreography has gotten. It's practically the same as open style in many ways, but we're still trying to balance it with the sensibilities of vocal choreography. This is where the confusion arises. Part 4. A Definition Finally, I think we've narrowed down the word overdancing into three possible definitions. 1. An overexertion of energy. 2. A misplaced focus on demonstrating technical proficiency, and 3. The result of executing idol choreography as a dancer would. It's worth noting that the first two categories can be broken down even further. For example, Chi Wen's overexertion of energy comes in the form of excessive tension, not power. For Yiji, it's the opposite. So Ian is another idol who is frequently criticized for overdancing. In her case, it's not an energy issue at all, but rather, a lack of fluidity limiting the variation she can show in her body control. I could go on and on because what the first two points describe are not tangible corrections, but rather the feeling you get as an audience member watching them dance. At this point, you're probably wondering how we can possibly distill all of this into one definition. Overdancing is a word that captures so much without really explaining anything. In response, I'd like to suggest that maybe, looking to define overdancing is the wrong direction to head in. Perhaps, the question is not, what is overdancing, but rather, is this word even useful in the first place? I'd argue no in every sense of the term. It's not a useful correction for dancers because it tells them practically nothing about what they actually need to fix. If someone is overusing tension, it's so much more helpful to just point that out than to say they overdance. On a more abstract level, I resent the implication that dancers are doing something wrong, overdoing it, by performing the way they are expected to outside of the idol industry. The word overdancing is not just useless as a correction, but it also unfairly erases the nuances of dance technique across different styles. In my opinion, we should stop using it entirely. The first two points that used to fall under overdancing can easily be described with better and more specific analysis. But what phrase can we use to delineate the aesthetic standards that set apart the type of dancing that singers do? Vocal choreography gets close, but it describes just that, a type of choreography, not a style of movement. Here, I'd like to introduce a term I think would fit the job. Gestural dancing. It means exactly what it looks like, movement that accompanies singing in the same way that hand motions accompany speech. Gestural dancing is more upright, softer, and less energetic than non-gestural dancing. It's a way of describing the way that artists like Taman or Britney Spears move without insulting the way that dancers perform. Part 5. Evolution is not linear. At this point, you are probably tempted to ask, if the sensibilities of idle dancing fall in line with those of gestural dancing, then wouldn't it be valid to criticize someone for dancing like a dancer within the idle context? Does the fact that J-Hope doesn't meet the aesthetic standards of gestural dancing make him a worse idle dancer? After all, someone doing idle dancing should be judged by the standards of idle dancing. I'm not going to judge the way that Win Win performs the choreography for Bad Alive by the standards of Chinese dance because that would make no sense. The answer is more complicated than you might expect. Rudolf Nureyev was one of the most influential dancers in ballet's history. He completely reshaped the way men in ballet dance. Rather than comply with the standards of masculinity of that era, he stood on a high demi point, increased the height of his leg extensions, and carried his arms with a gentle elegance. 
While most of the public found his unique style exotic and interesting, a lot of Russian dancers criticized him for being overly effeminate. Now, this is considered the technical standard for men in ballet. Here's the thing. People don't automatically know what good dancing is. Dance styles are constantly evolving, and it is totally possible for there to be disagreement amongst the public regarding what is technically and artistically desirable. Just like there was disagreement at the time about whether Nureyev's adoption of female ballet technique was correct, there is not one right answer about whether or not gestural dancing should be taken as a fixed criteria of the idol dancing style. In some ways, it feels like we are taking steps backwards in terms of matching the purpose of idol dancing to the choreography. Idols can barely sing live anymore when having to execute so much strenuous movement. However, it's because of these logical inconsistencies that I know that idol dancing is in a period of rapid evolution. Neither the companies nor the audience have come to a definitive conclusion about how they want to see idols dance. Therefore, we can't say that non-gestural dancing is incorrect in the idol context. Personally, I prefer it when idols dance like dancers. I find idols like Taemin or Hyoyeon who drastically reduce the amount of energy in their dancing a little underwhelming to watch. I know a lot of you will disagree with me, and that's okay. Idol dancing is new. Nothing is fixed, and that means that all of our opinions help shape the aesthetic standards of this style. My hope for this video is that by deconstructing the word over dancing, it will allow us to have a more nuanced discussion about technique, style, and purpose in dance.